Okay, in this uh, second video, that is the part 2 of reproduction of Edoconium, I had already explained in the first part, in the first video on vegetative reproduction, which takes place through uh, fragmentation and akinids, and uh, asexual reproduction, which takes place through the zoospores, okay, which form in the zoosporangium. Now, let us take a look at the sexual reproduction in Edogonium. So here, the sexual reproduction is an advanced oogamous type. Alright, oogamous type are those type of sexual reproduction by which, uh, uh, which occur due to the union of the uh, male gamete, okay, which is mobile, that is a mobile male and an immobile female gametes okay so that means the male gamete is mobile it can move and uh, whereas the female is immobile that type of reproduction is referred to as the oogamous type now uh, the reproduction the sexual reproduction in edogonium is more common in uh, those uh, forms which grow in stagnant water rather than those which occur in the flowing streams okay and it takes place with the help of male and female gametes now the male gametes in edogonium they are referred to as the anterozoites okay the anterozoites are produced in the anteridium that is the male sexual structure Whereas the female gamete or also known as the egg is produced in the oogonium that is the female reproductive structure. Okay. Now both the male and the female gamete, sorry, the male and the female gametes, they differ morphologically as well as physiologically. And only one egg is produced in each oogonium. And whereas two antherozoids in each antheridium are formed. That means the female, only one female gamete is produced and two male gametes are formed. Another motile structure that is the androspore. Remember this one we will uh, study. The androspore is produced singly in each androsporangium. So you will... Uh, when we study in detail about the anherid about the male and the female gametes, you will uh, come to know the difference between these anherozoids and the androspore. Okay, because why the anherozoids and the eggs they are the male and the female gamete respectively. Okay, they will uh, reproduce, they will fertilize to give rise to a zygote, which will uh, eventually give rise to a a major filament but here the androspore you will see is that spore which is uh, formed in the androsporangium which will give rise only to the dwarf male now let us uh, see what is that dwarf male okay so the deficiency of nitrogen or nitrogenous substances as well as the alkaline pH these are the important factors okay which promote the sexual reproduction in edugonium and in some species sexual reproduction it can also be induced if it's not there it can be induced in edugonium species by placing the major filaments in the atmosphere which is saturated with carbon dioxide now uh, first before we are going to study about the male and the female gametes now let us take a look at the distribution of the sex organs now species of edogonium they are divided into two groups okay on the basis of distribution of sex organs now they are divided into the macrandra species and the nanandra species now, what is the difference between these two is that in Macrandra species, the antheridia, that is the male gametes, they are born on filaments of normal size, okay? And uh, species such as Edogonium nodulosum and Edogonium fragile, the antheridia as well as the Ugonia, the male and the female gametes, they are found on the same filament, 
okay those which are found on the cm filament in case of these two species they are referred to as the macrandrous species whereas some other edogonium species such as edogonium crassum and edogonium aquaticum where the where these um, antheridia and the edogonia uh, they are found on they are born on different filaments okay so they are born on different filaments and those species are known as macrandrous dioecious dioecious why because the male and the female gametes they are born on different filaments monoecious because they are on the same filament now although filaments bearing the male and the female uh, sex organs they are morphologically similar but they differ physiologically now in case of nanandrous species just remember that the nanandrous species they are always dioecious that means both the antheridia and the uh, ugonia they are born on different filaments okay they are not monoecious but there there are some exceptions which we will see later now the male filaments in case of nanandrous species the male filaments they are much smaller as compared to the female filaments and therefore they are referred to as the dwarf male or the nanandrium and in these species that means the filaments bearing the antheridia and the ugonia they show morphological distinction so i hope it's clear that the in case of the udugonium okay they are divided into two groups the macrandrous and the nanandrous and in macrandrous we have monoecious where they are born on the same filament and dioecious where they are born on different filaments but although they are similar morphologically but they differ physiologically okay now in whereas in nanandrous species they are always dioecious but why they are called as nanandrous species just remember that the male filaments here they are not uh, the same as the male filaments okay they are much more smaller and they are referred to as the dwarf male okay or the nanandrium so now let us uh, take a look at the male gametes that is the antheridium okay let us study about the formation of the male gametes so here the macrandrous species okay in case of macrandrous species we are talking the development of antheridium it the macrandrous species form terminal okay they form terminal or intercalary antheridia all right intercalary meaning in between the cells so they form terminal or inter calorie antheridia and uh, they form antheridia by the division of the antheridium mother cell so any cell just remember that any cell the intercalary cell which has this cap cell that one it can act as the antheridium okay it can act as the antheridium mother cell so that is the first thing that you should remember as in this case in figure A, where this cell it acts as the antheridium mother cell, and this cell it contains a cap cell. Okay, this one we had already studied when we studied the thallus structure. So I hope you still remember. Now, what happened when this act as the antheridium mother cell? Now, any cell of the filament with the apical with the apical cap here, they can function as antheridial mother cell, and this cell it will divide transversely. Okay, it will start dividing transversely, as you can see here, in case of figure B and C. Now, it divides transversely into an upper smaller antheridial cell, and also a lower larger sister cell so it divided into two cell forming the upper smaller antheridial cell and a lower larger sister cell okay so you can see here this is the sister cell 
it is much more larger and this is the apical cell now the latter this sister cell it will again undergo division to form a row of 2 to 40 you can see here many cells around 2 to 40 flat uninucleate antheridia okay the antheridia which has a single nucleus so they are uninucleate and also the nucleus as you can see here these two the nucleus what happened to the sister cell it will divide into 2 to 40 flat uh, uninucleate antheridia in in this case you can see whereas in figure d you can see what happened to the nucleus of each antheridium the nucleus of each antheridium will divide mitotically into two nuclei so each antheridial cell the nucleus they will divide mitotically to give rise to two uh, nuclei and you can as you can see each nucleus here it gets surrounded by a cytoplasm okay by some cytoplasm and they and it uh, metamorphoses into an anterozoid okay it morphoses into it develop into the anterozoid these two after the nuclei it has divided into two daughter nuclei it will me, uh, it metamorphoses or it develop into the antherozoids now thus each antherodium okay a single antherodium it will produces two antherozoids so if many antheridia here are formed so each antheridia from each antherid antheridia we will have two antherozoids which are formed from these two nuclei okay so but in case of uh, there are some species such as the idogonium cardiacum now in case of that idogonium species the cardiacum four antherozoids are formed okay four antherozoids are formed in the antheridium but in most of the idogonium species just remember that only two antherozoids mm. are produced now the antherozoid if you take a look at the antherozoid uh, it is unicellular all right single cell then it is uninucleate it has only a single nucleus and also you can see these black structures here they are nothing but they are flagella and uh, so many flagella are present so it is multi flagellate structure unicellular uninucleus and multi flagellate structure okay and if you take a look at the antherozoids here they are similar to the zoospores remember in my previous video where the asexual reproduction it occurs you can see the zoospores also it has so many flagella it is multi flagellate also it has a single nucleus and it is also unicellular so these antherozoids they are similar to the zoospores okay and also it is smaller in size and has few flagella it is yellowish in color okay it is yellowish in color due to its reduced plastids and like zoospores these antherozoids also they are liberated by the transverse splitting okay the the transverse splitting of the wall of the antheridium remember here how the zoospores they are liberated it is through the transverse splitting all right of the zoosporangium you can see the zoosporangium here it split and thus this vesicle will form this hyaline structure here it will form and finally a vesicle surrounded the zoospore a vesicle here the zoospore will be uh, form inside this vesicle so same thing here it occurs in case of the antherozoids also okay they are released by the they are liberated into the outside environment by the transverse splitting of the wall of the antheridium and you can see the antherozoids same thing just like zoospores they are also enclosed within a hyaline vesicle 
here with an hyaline vesicle at the time of liberation. Now we will talk about the, this is in the case of Macrandra species. Remember in Macrandra species uh, that the antherozoids they are formed inside the antheridium. Okay? And uh, any cell of the filament which has a capsule it can act as the antheridium modicel. Now uh, let us talk about the development of the androspore and the dwarf male. Okay, in, that means this is the case of Nanandra species. Now in case of Nanandra species as I had mentioned earlier that the antheridia all right the antheridia that which the antheridia meaning the male sexual structure it developed in specialized okay specialized then small two to four cell filament known as the dwarf male okay known as the dwarf male now how this dwarf male it developed this dwarf male it will form from the androspores okay from the androspores these androspores are formed from the androsporangia all right they are formed from the androsporangia now as you can see the structure of the edogonium as you can see here the structure of edogonium this one we have already studied all right so the you you can see there is no branching or there is no meal dwarf meal in this case so the dwarf meal it will develop from the androsporangium okay the androsporangium it will start to form and it will produce androspore and those androspore they will form the dwarf meal so let us uh, take a look at that one here as you can see what happened first uh, some nanandra species like uh, edugonium concatenatum the androsporangia and the uh, edugonia they develop on the same filament okay remember i'll repeat again some nanandras species the androsporangia as well as the ugonia they develop on the same filament and those are referred to as the gynandrosporus okay they are referred to as the gynandrosporus and there are some edugonium species where the two are born on different filaments you will not find this this uh, female that is the ugonium and the androsporangia on the same filament like this the androsporangia they can form on different filament so here you can see the ugonium and the androsporangia here they are on the same filament so these are referred to as the gynandros sorry gynandrosporus whereas suppose the ugonium it form in this filament and androsporangia it develop on another filament so that will be referred to as the ideo androsporus okay ideo androsporus now the structure of the androsporangia you can see here the way it developed okay it is similar to the development of the uh, here the development the antheridia in case of macrandras right the cell will act as the antheridium mother cell and it will be divided giving rise to the upper antheridial cell small antheridial cell and a larger sister cell again this one will will divide giving rise to a small antheridial cell and a large sister cell so the, it will keep on dividing and here you can see in this figure where many uh, cells are formed and the nucleus they start dividing mitotically to give rise to two nuclei and from here it will develop to the uh, antherozoid so same thing here if you see the way the androsporangia it form it develop is similar to the uh, macrandras species now the structure of androsporangia it is similar to the antheridia and macrandras except that in this case just remember what is the difference just take a look at this one 
here only a single androspore is produced but here in macrandrus two antherozoites are formed so just remember two antherozoites are formed but only a single androspore is produced or else the it is similar okay the way the androspore and the antherozoites are formed it is similar all right but just remember only one androspore will be produced in a single sporangia androsporangia you can see single nuclei here which will develop into the single androspore but here you can see the nucleus it uh, it divide mitotically into two nuclei and metamorphosis to give rise to antherozoites, two antherozoites. So here single cell nuclei and also it will develop into a single anthrospore. Now the nucleus of the androsporangium, okay, the nucleus here of the androsporangium, it does not divide. Okay, and the protoplast, it will directly develop it will metamorphosis or it will develop into a single uninucleate multiflagellate androspore just remember this is called the androspore and it is from this androspore that uh, when it liberated from here from the androsporangium also enclosed in a hyaline vesicle all right the vesicle will soon dissolve and the androspore it will swim freely in the water surface okay it will uh, swim in water for some time now after some time what happened it will be attracted uh, chemotactically okay that means it will uh, it will attract it chemotactically towards the Ugonial mortar cell. Suppose there is a cell nearby, there is another filament which has the ugonia. So this will at be attracted to this chemotactically, meaning it will move, it will be attracted in response to the influence of a chemical situation. Okay, when there is a chemi uh, sorry, a chemical stimulation, then it will be attracted to this ugonial mortar cell and it's it gets attached to it you can see here it gets attached to it or any adjacent cell by you can see it can either gets attached to the mortar cell here the ugonia mortar cell or it gets attached to the adjacent cell here all right by its anterior end now then here it will starts to germinate so this is the germinating androspore when it germinates, it will give rise to a dwarf meal. Okay, this is the dwarf meal which developed from the androspore. Now, the dwarf meal, it is similar to any other filament which has this uh, hole fast. Okay, the basal cell, that is the hole fast. And one or more antheridia. You can see antheridial cells here. Now, one, two, three, four. Okay, it has a hole fast and one or more antheridia. Now, the nucleus of each antheridium, again, they will divide to form mitotically. Okay, they will divide to form two antherozoid, just like in this case. When we have the antheridia, it will give rise to two antherozoid. So, same thing in Macrandrus, after the formation of the dwarf meal, here the dwarf meal it consists of the basal cell the whole whole fast and the and two or more antheridia and these antheridia will give rise to each antheridia will give rise to two antherozoids okay which is similar in structure to those produced by the macrandrus species all right so the same thing now uh, later on, we will study this one where the antherozoid, it will come in contact with the ugonial mortar cell. It will come in contact with the egg and fertilization will occur. So, this is how the antheridium, it developed in case of macrandrus and nanandrus species.